Dragon Ballroom. It's not just fashion or runway looks, something I know a few things about. It's a philosophy, a phenomenon, and most of all, a family. Drag is self-expression, it's everything. Honestly, let's be real, drag is freedom. Drag encompasses everything that I love, whether it's hair, makeup, dance. The wig is literally like that moment where I really feel like I'm transformed into like the drag persona. If I want to wear a suit with sequins, I can do that too and feel fierce and flawless. I'm a drag queen, I'm the queen. But I'm also like the Marie Antoinette queen because I ate a lot of cake. I don't really know, girl. I just showed up today. Drag is one of the most vital art forms in pop culture today. Oh, work. I love that. As RuPaul most famously says, you're born naked and the rest is drag. RuPaul has been a staple in mainstream America for decades now. I'm in college and there's Ru doing supermodel. It felt so empowering. Do your thing on the runway. In 1993, when she performed Supermodel at the, the Dave March in Washington, it became an anthem. I think what Rue has done has been to shift people's perception of an entire community of people. Peace, love, and hair grease, I love you! Today, drag queens have become extremely mainstream, ushering in their own makeup lines, doing commercials for luxury cars, posing in windows of Saks Fifth Avenue, and winning Emmy Awards. RuPaul's Drag Race. Every country, every culture has its own drag tradition. The Drag Race España. It's become this sort of global family. Drag Race Thailand. Class. Dare I say it, we're here. What you may be familiar with in terms of popular movies or television shows are men dressed in drag, whether it's Tootsie, whether it's Flip Wilson's Geraldine. What we're talking about is actually drag culture, which is a lot more nuanced. We owe such an homage to the queens that came before us, the herstory, true herstory of drag. There were laws against putting on a dress. Dressing as a member of the, the opposite sex. We understood what it was like when we were ostracized. It was like hush, hush. You basically were looking up gay bars, hoping it doesn't get raided. The 1960s were really important for the queer community when it came to LGBTQ plus equality. And so by the time Stonewall rolled around, it was basically just lighting a stick of dynamite. And drag queens were completely instrumental in all of that. These are our finalists. There's this movie called The Queen that people need to see. It's a documentary film, late 60s. And it is about a drag pageant. You get a glimpse of what it must have been like when everybody was in the closet. Well, you know my mother, uh, she doesn't really accept it. She just sort of said that she wouldn't talk about it anymore. She really doesn't understand. Crystal LaBeja walks and comes in third place and critiques by walking off stage. Crystal, where are you going? Because of skin color, she felt that she was not treated fairly. It's in bad taste and you're showing your color and you should have I am, I am doing it bad, but I got an, I have a right to show my color, darling. I am beautiful and I know I'm beautiful. The very first house was created as a result in many ways of that moment. The house of Labasia is created named after Christmas. And you begin to see the morphing from drag ball to house ball. House Ball is an event created by queer and trans kids of color. And these balls, you know, basically were unknown to the masses until the documentary Paris is Burning. There was family. I saw us. I saw possibility. Virginia Slims girl is here. I didn't know that we could look that great or be that great. Voguing was an expression of a culture that was born out of like oppression and pain and joy and love. It is so beautiful to go to a ball and to see the family aspects that as POC queer people, they may not receive by their biological family. As a black trans woman, when I walk into ballroom, I see love. I see a place where I can feel like I belong. There are competition in which people are competing against one another in various categories. There's all sorts of amazing events like the latex ball or the OTA functions. That world has basically been the heart of like television shows such as Legendary. Our arms control category. And Pose. The category is 
Bring it like royalty. Let's be real, come on. What category do you think I walk? I walk face. There's a Vogue category. There's the hand. There's a duck walk. There's the hair spinning. There's the dip. Outside the ballroom, people call it the death drop dip. Let's get sexy. The dip, hair whips, the shade, all of that originated from ballroom culture and is popularized on RuPaul's Drag Race, including that sense of community. We are a family here. Now we're living in a time where I can be a trans man doing feminine drag on national television and being able to get the platform to tell my story. This show has helped humanize a lot of people. It gives me hope that the next generation of kids might not have it as hard as we did back then. Have fun. Every single drag queen isn't on television. You have drag queens in your local bars right now, and they are all part of the same story. Drag is a testament to us being here. So baby, try as you might. We're gonna be here, we're gonna fight. Oh, that just rhyme. <laughs> I did. And then they do a death drop, and it's fantastic. It's not a death drop. It's a dip. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.